Hello, I hope you guys are well today. I am back with part 4 of the Camping Isekai manga. I know it's been a while but I hope you guys forgive me for such delay. And as usual the manga's name is in the description. So until then I hope you enjoy this video. Drop a like and subscribe for more awesome videos. Thank you very much. Somewhere near a lake, Kenichi catches a big fish. With the fishing rod he bought for 2,500 yen from Shangri-La. The fish he caught was very similar to the one from his original world, and yet it had the same name in this world as well. Kenichi then went on to keep fishing, as he reminisced about how he was able to rescue Primula after she was kidnapped, but he was told that the nobles were looking for him. So he left the city with an orphan anemone alongside a forest cat, and now they are on their way to travel to a new place. Later the lunch was finally cooked. Kenichi wonders how catching the fish by the riverside and making a soup with that makes him feel like a slow life he wanted, and Anemone too was enjoying her dish. Kenichi then looks at her, wondering how Anemone has been eating a lot lately. She might be 12 years old according to his assessment, so he would like to set up a new place for her as soon as possible. Kenichi then draws up a plan. According to the bike's odometer they are about 100 kilometers away from Dahlia and from what they have heard from the people they are only 5 to 6 kilometers away from the next town, Aslantia. But he ain't gonna have a slow life in a city though, nevertheless he decided to take a look around either way. Suddenly, he gets reminded of something, and he pulls out a camera-mounted drone for 20,000 yen from Shangri-La. Kenichi then wonders if it's possible to fly it from here and view the surrounding terrain, and when he pulls the joystick up, that drone flew up quite high. Anemone was amazed to see it fly and asks, is it magic? Well it's something like that. Kenichi too was amazed by how well he could see into the distance. And sometimes later, Kenichi had a mental map of this area. The river seems to flow into a lake, and there's a small village nearby. And the castle in the distance could be Aslantia. Then he notices a waterfall near the village, and it seems now they have a good idea about where to go. Later when they reached the waterfall, both were quite mesmerized by the view, and Kenichi decided to make this their next home. He then plans to set up his field a little further from the waterfall's pit, and since this place is beyond the territory of the nobles who rule Dahlia, they don't have to worry about being pursued for a while. Later when the terrain's preparation was done, Kenichi summons his house. He then hears a rustle from the behind, and it was the forest cat who ended up coming with them. Kenichi then wonders if the forest cat is going to stay, then he'll have to give her a proper name. What do you think about calling her Vel? Anemone thinks it's a cute name, so from now on Forest Cat would be called Vel in the narration. Later at the night, Kenichi plans for tomorrow to install the solar panels and prepare the field. He'll likely need to use heavy machinery, which means he'll need diesel and they don't sell that on Shangri-La. He currently uses white kerosene which is quite expensive, so he'd like a more affordable way of obtaining fuel. He remember once seeing a biodiesel fuel being made from waste tempera oil. So he decided to get a book and do a little research. Seeing this anemone asks what was he doing, and when he told he was reading a book, she got excited asking she want to read it too. But it was not the same writing as this country's alphabet, so she couldn't read it. But anemone was too hyped about this so she decided to learn the alphabet of Kenichi's country. He then buys a picture book of the little mermaid for anemone, and gave her a conversion chart for hiragana. Before going to bed Anemone was very engrossed in learning the new language, and just like this the day came to an end. Next morning she was studying on her own, and Kenichi went out to do his work. He have installed the bath, toilets, and the solar panels. So now they almost have the same facilities as before. While thinking that he hears a rustle from behind, and when he turns back, someone jumps on him from the bushes. It was our lovely cat waifu, Mayuri. She was angry at him for abandoning her like that and it was quite hard to follow the scent of Forest Cat and Kenichi's cycle. But if she can trace him that way then he'll never be able to escape from the beast folk. Well Mayuri doesn't let her prey get away. She then asks if she can start living with Kenichi? That's fine, but she will have to earn her own food money, and he'll ask her to run some errands into town. Later when they reach home, Anemone notices Mayuri with Kenichi, and they both happily greets each other. Seeing them acting like sisters Kenichi was quite pleased. Mayuri then notices something, there were some pictures, she wonders if it's a book? Although she doesn't know how to read, even she can understand the book. And hearing this Kenichi gets a bright idea, since there's a lot of people who doesn't know how to read, he can sell picture books and make a good money. 
If he buys a printing press from Shangri-La even he can make books, and since books are precious in this world, so even if they are thin, they'll sell. But he wasn't sure if he'd be able to turn a fairy tale from his world into a picture book. Kenichi then asks them if there are any fairy tales passed around here? Well there's one about the forest elf-sama. It's a story about an elf who lives in the forest and meets a human prince, and she falls in love with him. But everyone were against it, and the elf was almost killed. But they escape safely with the help of fairies, and they live happily ever after in seclusion deep in the forest. Hearing this Kenichi decided to make a picture book and mimeograph with a composition of about 12 pages, and its price could be about 5,000 yen. So from then on along with tending to the fields and studying in books on biodiesel fuel, Kenichi spent his free time drawing pictures and composing the picture books. Later he buys a mimeograph printing for 7,000 yen. Mayuri asks if he's going to make them now. Well, yeah. First he drew a picture on a special paper, then he sets it in the machine, and then prints it. And voila, it was ready. Looking at the picture both the girls were mesmerized by what just happened. While holding the picture Anemone was very shocked to speak, and Mayuri was all too excited to try that. Later he decided to bind the printed copies of these pieces. For that he bought a desktop binding machine for 5,000 yen. Then he sets the paper in the machine and applies glue. And it's done a nicely made book. Both the girls were also very excited to see it. Kenichi then hands one book to Mayuri. And she takes it to Anemone asking what does this says. Although her words were kinda broken Anemone recites the story to Mayuri. And she praises her for it. And behind them Kenichi goes outside. Maybe he was absorbed in bookbinding cause it was noon before he knew it. The book also turned out well so it'd be interesting to collect more anecdotes from this world. He then decides to go work in the fields. Then suddenly he notices a group of people docking by the shore. There were two human and a beast folk. Suspecting them as intruders, Kenichi pulls up a crossbow on them. Asking who they are and to state their business. The guy tells him to put that thing down. Cause they're resident of that village over there. Kenichi states he's a merchant, and there's no rule that says he can't live here. Well that's true but they're just here to check if Kenichi was a bandit. During their conversation Vel comes by to check on Kenichi, and looking at the forest cat the beast folk freaks out. Kenichi then introduces Vel as the part of their family. Hearing this the beast man tells his comrades to believe Kenichi, because a forest cat has affection for him, and they don't usually bond with a human at all so he can't be a bad person. They then let their guard down and one among them introduces himself as Crouton, and asks for Kenichi's forgiveness for disturbing him. Kenichi too introduces himself, and forgives them for what just happened. Later during lunch Anemone asks if everything is okay. Kenichi tells her it's fine. They were villagers from the other side, they just came to check over if there were any bandits, and he sold them some blankets and picture books. Mayuri finds that rude because they even have forest cat with them. Well from normal person's point of view they're top quality game after all. Kenichi then asks if Dahlia has been the same since he left. Mayuri then tells him how Baron Nor's pole proposed to Primula. It's the same knight who helped them to deal with Shaga. A formal courtship could mean she's going to be a full-fledged member of the family. Kenichi then wonders how if he were in Dahlia he would have attended the ceremony. But that can no longer happen. It's sad to see those melons go away, but one must move on. Sometime later while examining the surrounding vegetation, Kenichi was thinking about taking these plants to the town guild and have them appraised later. Then suddenly Mayuri hugs him from behind. It seems Niko-san was in quite a mood. She then tells Kenichi, Anemone isn't around so, she wouldn't mind doing some fun stuff. And by looking at Kenichi's expression, he's about to clap them cheeks. Sometimes later, there's a loud rustle in the shack. A silhouette emerges through the door. He was wearing a chemical protective suit. And due to the heat, he quickly throws his clothes away and jumps into the lake. And that guy was Kenichi. He laments about how the shack's inside was like a sauna. Well after that cheek clapping session Kenichi had a post nut clarity. And assembled a shack he bought from Shangri-La. And now he want to synthesize biodiesel fuel in it. All the necessary materials can be found in Shangri-La, and he was able to learn about the methods from the books, so if he succeeds in making this an alternative fuel, this could allow him to use heavy machinery with greater energy efficiency. He then plans to try it out. He first pulls the generator's handle, and it was working just fine. So now it's time to start making biodiesel fuel on full scale. Kenichi then started making the fuel for the next few days, and he was able to process twice the amount of canola oil he bought from Shangri-La, yielding 90 liter of biodiesel fuel. But because of that, Anemone started acting a bit cranky. 
realizing her being in a bad mood might be because of him. Kenichi begs her to lighten up a little, but when it didn't work, he then promised to buy her a new book and asks her to come with him to Aslantia. Both the girls were very excited about it, and he too was happy to see them this excited. Later on their way Kenichi thinks about going to the Adventurer's Guild to register. He then asks Mayuri if she's been to Aslantia before? Well yes several times. She then shows him the city's east gate, and when they enter the city, it was a beautiful town filled with people. Although it looked smaller than Dahlia, there were Dreijins everywhere. Kenichi then plans to head to Adventure Guild first, and both the girls follows. Later at the Adventurer's Guild, they enter to find the place full with many people. And when he heads to the reception, there stands the receptionist with a pretty smile and two big firm knockers. Even Kenichi was baffled by those. He then hands her his ID, while wondering if all the receptionists in this world are well endowed like her. She quickly takes the ID and head back to check, and in a few seconds she rushes out and asks if he is the same person who dealt with Shaga's gang back in Dahlia? Well yeah but he didn't want to get that information leaked, but he let this slide cause she's cute. Later he hands her two silver coins for two people and his registration was complete. Kenichi then asks her if she had any illustrated books on the types of plants in stock? Well she had a booklet on basics of collecting medicinal herbs. And for two silver coin he bought that booklet, she also informs him that the guild buys medicinal herbs. Well she was in luck cause he had some herbs to sell but the black red jade grass wasn't in the booklet. Well, that's because the plant uses the red berry parts for spices. So if they are fresh, then she can buy them for a small silver coin per vine. Now that Kenichi had sold most of the plants that he have accumulated, he went to a butcher to sell the meat, and he was told to pick up the processed meat in the evening. So now that they got the money, they decided to get something to eat, and they heads to the market. Anemone gets a bowl of soup, and to her surprise it was tasteless. The bread was also rock hard. Kenichi too had the same reaction. He guessed this is the normal cuisine in this world. Kenichi then adds bonito broth and a pinch of pepper, and with that it tasted slightly decent. Even the girls were surprised. Later when they were done with their meal, Kenichi spots a tool shop, and he heads there with Anemone and Mayuri. Inside the shop were a variety of products, and on the table sat an old lady. Kenichi introduces himself stating he came from Dahlia, and the old lady wonders if he knows the old mage by any chance, cause recently he sent in letters saying he made a great discovery. Then she asks him what was he looking for? Kenichi looks around and spots a weird looking tool. Well if he is interested then she can show him how it's used. The old lady then grabs a pot of liquid, and judging from the aroma it could be wine. She then pours it on top and adds water from the other side. Later the drops that came from the right side were sludgy wine, and on the left side which water remains were clear and colorless. Kenichi theorizes this could be a tool to separate certain components from what is put in the vessel from above. Well he guessed it right, whatever one puts in the middle is pulled out and falls to the left. After all it's a tool used by alchemists. Kenichi couldn't understand how this works, but wait, he could use this thing to make biodiesel fuel safely so decided to buy it and further asks if she had other interesting things? Well, she have a book, precisely it's a grimoire. Finally, Kenichi found something that sounds otherworldly and fantastical. The old lady further explains if anyone reads this it allows him to use magic, but it isn't useful to a human without mana. Kenichi then thinks about the price of the grimoire, but well he is here already so why not give it a try to learn magic. Kenichi also buys some potions as well. Seeing this the old lady gets an idea and states if Kenichi is like this maybe she could also join him. But the idea was quickly shut down. Later Kenichi and the girls were walking outside since they have to wait for the guild. He then wonders if he should have gone back home and returned later. But well Anemone seemed to be having fun in the city so it's fine. He then looks around to find somewhere to sit down and take a break. And there he spots Crouton, and hiding behind him was her daughter. He seems to be surrounded by three thugs, which looked very cliché. Kenichi then wonders what to do. Suddenly Anemone pulls on him asking if he could help them. Looking at those puppy eyes he have no other choice. But well if it was the woman with those melons Kenichi would have jumped at lightning speed. Nevertheless he decided to help. He also tells Mayuri if he gets hurt he will be counting on her. Kenichi then wonders if they see his face he might get in trouble. So he searches for a mask on Shangri-La. So for 7,500 yen he buys a pest mask and it seems Anemone was quite taken aback by his new look. Kenichi then tells the goons to stop. It's not amicable to pick on a good father and daughter, but it seems they don't want to listen to that. 
Kenichi then apologizes cause if they don't back off now, he's gonna make them explode with his magic. And just like that he pulls out firecrackers and throws at them. All the goons freak out and run away for their life. Kenichi then notices the crowd that have gathered behind him, so he tells Crouton to escape from here. But it seems he might have overdid his act cause both the father and daughter were petrified. Later at the market, Crouton realized Kenichi was inside the mask, and he thanks him for helping out. Crouton then tells his daughter that Kenichi is the one who sold him the picture book. Hearing this she shyly thanks him, and later she meets with an enemy. Kenichi then wonders why those thugs were after him? Well his history with them goes back when he was an officer. Ever since they were caught red-handed they have always resented him, so whenever he runs into them on the street, they gang up on him. Kenichi then asks if he is in such a danger why doesn't he move. Crouton have thought about that but he doesn't know where to go. Kenichi then tells him about the newly created barony of Nor's Pole near Dahlia. He can write him a letter of introduction if he's interested. And he's sure an ex-official like him can turn around a better job. Well it is nice of him but Crouton needs some time to think about it. Kenichi too realizes it must take a lot of determination to leave one's hometown to go to another territory. He then peeks outside and notices that Anemone has been hitting it off with Crouton's daughter. She then runs at Kenichi and asks if he can make a new book for Mary. Kenichi agrees, and he'd get to see Anemone's beaming smile. Hearing this Crouton realizes Kenichi was the one who made the books. Well yeah, Kenichi draws in his free time. Above all since there weren't any kids close to Anemone's age nearby, Mary might be her first friend. After a few days of Anemone having a new friend, Mary started visiting her every day. Anemone too was excited asking Kenichi to make a new picture book, probably she wants to show it to her friend. So after a few days of printing the book, Kenichi spots Crouton hastily coming toward him. He drops a bag of coin in front of Kenichi and begs him to help them. Kenichi then tells him to calm down and tell him what happened first. It seems Mary got a really high fever, so he was wondering if this was enough for him to treat her. Kenichi then asks what's the disease called? Well according to the village head, it's an endemic disease that often affects children. Hearing this Kenichi decided to get some antipyretic for now. But if it's an endemic disease this might not work. Anemone then comes out asking what happened to Mary? Kenichi tells her Mary is sick and he knows she wants to pay her a visit but now she can't. Anemone then pulls his shirt and asks Kenichi to please help Mary. As much as he'd like to help her, he just don't think the medicines on Shangri-La are going to have an effect, but he gave Crouton a temporary fever reducer hoping it might help. Because if it's a disease that can't be treated with medicine, she might need some real magic. Kenichi then remembers the old lady who can use healing magic, so he decided to go and get her. He tells Myeriai to take care of the house and tells Anemone to stay with Myeriai. He already prepared food for both of them, as he might not be able to return home for a few days. Kenichi then gets his bike and leaves, as Anemone prays for Mary's recovery. Later he meets the old woman, and tells her about the situation. At Crouton's house, the old lady checks Mary and finds out, she is suffering from chicory fever. She was told that Mary was given medicine but what was it made from? Kenichi replies it was made from Willow. Hearing that she realizes Kenichi knows his stuff, so is he an alchemist? Well yes something like that. She then further states chicory fever is hard to treat with magic, so what can they do then? Well there's a cold river on the way to Santaka, and the source of that water is a spring deep in the forest, there grows the seeds of the white flower which are very good for chicory fever. Kenichi realizes if it's a spring in the wood then he can be there in no time with his custom drasion. Well the old lady doesn't doubt that, but those area are elven territory, so if he runs into them, he would have to fool them well. Apparently they are a very strictly reserved tribe, and they don't get along like in fantasy. Crouton too decided to go with them. The location was about 20 kilometer from here deep in the forest, but in the dark the forest becomes more dangerous. Then the beast man Nyanias also decided to tag along with them, so they decided to leave quickly right now while it's dark. Later on their way, both the guys were surprised by how fast Kenichi's dragine was. They couldn't believe he was keeping up with them, and the magic lights he gave them were also awesome. Well it doesn't matter cause first they have to pick the seeds for the medicine as soon as possible. Sometimes later, they reach the pond. Kenichi shines the light below, and spots some flower buds, but they needed its seed not the flower. He then browses Shangri-La, and pulls out a large dingy. Both were surprised to see him pull out a boat from his item box. Nianyas tells Crouton that he's glad that Mr. came along with them, while Kenichi paddles toward the middle of the pond. He looks around, and finds the white flower with a seed in the middle. 
Kenichi shows them the seed, and Kruton was glad that he can now save his daughter. But suddenly Nyanya spots something. Inside a bush he could see a monstrous silhouette, but actually it was just Vel. All of them were relieved that it wasn't a monster. Kenichi then realized Vel might have followed him all the way here. But then something alerts Vel, and she looks back at the forest clearing and hisses towards it. It seems something else might be coming, and they were in a large group. Kenichi then spots the wolves approaching them. To be more precise, they were black wolves. He then summons two swords and hands the flower seed to Kruton, further telling him Top quickly take the seed to Mary, because he's going to stall them here. They both tries to stop him stating that's reckless. But Kenichi knows he and Vel can handle this alone. So just go, or it will be all for naught if Kruton doesn't make it in time. Kruton panics and thinks about what to do. Should he go to save his daughter or help Kenichi? Then suddenly Kenichi yells at him to go and save his daughter's life. This made him realize what to do, and they run to save Mary's life. With the speed of the beast folk the black wolves won't be able to outrun them, so Kenichi doesn't have to worry. So now it was time to kick some Mars. Kenichi then summons a power shovel, and he started swinging it wildly wrecking a lot of mayhem, and Vel too claims quite a few soul. Realizing they lost the black wolves retreat, Kenichi comes out and stores away the power shovel. He has already beaten so many black wolves that he isn't afraid of them anymore. But then suddenly Vel gets her spider sense tingled, and she quickly pulls Kenichi's away. He didn't understand what just happened, but when he looks back he sees an arrow nudged in a tree. Kenichi was shocked since he was sitting there just now. The black wolves couldn't possibly use arrows, which means there's a new enemy. Kenichi then shines the light at the tree nearby and spots three silhouette. He can't see clearly because the light reflects off their golden hair and long ears which means they are clearly elves. They were telling him something but Kenichi couldn't understand their language. He was too stunned to see the long-eared elf that one sees in fantasy movies right in front of him. And this made him realize maybe the black wolves ran away because of the elves. Seeing the elves draw their weapon he quickly tells them to wait for a minute. He also tells Vel to lower her guard. Seeing a human speak with a forest cat, the elves began to discuss something among themselves. Later an elf turned to him and throws something at him. It was a ring, and Kenichi was told to put it on. After wearing the ring, the elf told him to listen to his words. He tells him about the ring being a translating device. He asks Kenichi if he has come to raid the springs. Kenichi explains how he have come here to pick some seeds for his friend's daughter treatment. But the elves didn't believe in him, and sensing that Val came between them, elves were shocked to see a forest cat protecting a human. Kenichi then explains why he was here and how they were surrounded by black wolves, so he had to fight them to get that medicine. The other elf then looks around, and asks if he was the one who killed all those black wolves laying around, and what is that light thing in his hand. Kenichi then tells them he is a merchant, and if there's something they would like he have spices, salt and everything in his item box. Seeing their interest in salt, Kenichi shows them a lot of other things like knives and books for kids. The elf then took the book and read a few pages. He asks if people still think this is a beautiful story, because the lifespans of elves and humans are different, and they are unable to have children together. So when the elf could no longer live in the human village, the elf eventually fled back to the forest. Kenichi was surprised to hear it actually happened. The elf realizing Kenichi is a merchant, and since the forest cat is also fond of him, he can't be a bad human. And since salt is in short supply in their village, they are willing to let him off if he's willing to make a deal with them. But firstly Kenichi was mostly concerned about Mary's condition, but since Crouton took those special berries he thinks they will be able to handle it. Kenichi also thinks about taking on the elves with his power shovel, but they seem to use magic, and he don't want to get into trouble later on. So he decided to make a deal with them. The elf then tells him to follow, and later they reach the elven village inside the forest. Kenichi was told to sit, and in front of him was the village chief. He was told that Kenichi has decided to make a deal with them, and Kenichi was happy to give them the salt free of charge as a token of goodwill. But that won't do, since a deal needs a price but they don't have much money ready. Well it's not strange since they live in the middle of the forest. So Kenichi decided to trade salt for the translating ring. And well if he is okay with the ring, then so be it. Now with this much salt they can distribute it to all the houses, so the chief thanks him for the help. Kenichi then tries to sell them the other products he have, but due to elven custom all the necessities of their lifestyle are made by themselves, so the chief had to say no. Well if it's their custom he can't blame them. 
Later since the night is dangerous they decided to let Kenichi stay the night in the village, and he wonders if he's now free of the charge of being a person who came to destroy springs and forests. The chief told him he knows one when he see them. This made Kenichi wonder if he used magic or was it just a guess. Well anyway it was nice of them to let him stay tonight, but he was hungry. He then asks an elf for permission to cook a meal in the village square. Well he didn't mind since their food is probably not well suited for humans. Later at the village square all the elves seems to be enjoying themselves. Kenichi walks through them, and they don't seem to have any hostile intentions. It seems they might have heard what's going on. Kenichi then sat in a corner and thinks about what to eat. He pulls out a cup noodle and was preparing to steam his rice ball in a steamer. When an elf girl came over asking what was he doing, he tells her was cooking and he's not going to interfere with the elves. But by then she was already going through his pot. She asks what it was, and Kenichi tells her it was grain food warmed by steams. He then hands her a rice ball to eat, and after a single bite she was already mesmerized by its taste. Kenichi was happy to see her appreciate his rice balls. Then she asks him what was he eating, while he was having his noodles, and it seems she wanted to try that too. So he gave her some of his noodles, and it seems she was enjoying it like a gal, but then again she might be a 500 year old woman. Suddenly all the elves gather around asking him to let them taste some. Well it's fine but he demands a price like wild plants and mushrooms, hearing that the elves went off to gather some. Later while the elves were having their meal he asks if they are getting enough nutrition, cause the food they eat usually are far from a complete and balanced meal, but they were fine with that. After all, they have Che Che too. She then brings a cup with liquid inside, its color was red and it smells like chocolate, and when he tasted it, it was bitter. Kenichi then asks if this was a sacred drink that should not be tasted differently? Well it was not, so he added sugar in it, and asks her to try it again. With just one sip of that drink, she was amazed by how good it tasted. Everyone else then began to ask a sugar drink of their own, and Kenichi too was pleased to taste that nostalgic taste of his original world. Suddenly the village chief barges in asking what's with the ruckus? The elf girl then tells him to try this drink? He was hesitant, but after his first sip, he too was shocked. He began asking Kenichi what the heck did he add? Well it was just a bit of sugar, and if he likes it he can get him some in exchange for the ingredients for this drink. The crowd were exhilarated to hear that. Now they want to drink Che Che with sugar every day. The village chief thought this taste could corrupt the elves and he cannot admit that. But after the constant booing from the residents, he had to make that deal with Kenichi. And after the transaction was done, the chocolate party that followed made him a fully accepted friend of the elves. Later he also took some photos of the hidden elves and as he took pictures, he happened to run into a forest cat's kitten. And just like that the night quickly passed. Next morning the village chief thanks him for sharing the salt and tells him to stop by again. Kenichi tells him he lives by the shores of the spring, and if there's anything they need, they can just pay him a visit anytime. Hearing that the elf girls wonder if they could pay him with their bodies instead of money. But Kenichi wasn't into that, unless they force him a little. Well this situation was unavoidable but still he's concerned about Marie's condition, so he quickly pulls out his motorcycle and leaves. Sometimes later, Kenichi burst open the door asking how's Mary doing? Everyone present in the room were quite taken aback. He spots Mary sleeping on her bed, and it seems she is better now. Suddenly Nyanyas grabs him and started apologizing for leaving his comrade behind. But while Mary's life was top priority after all, and he can use magic plus he had Vel with him. Nyanyas then started to thank Forest Katsama, and it seems Vel was quite smug about it. Kenichi then asks Granny how was Mary doing? Well she's okay now after all he picked the seeds she needed. Then suddenly Kruton and his wife started to thank Kenichi for saving their daughter, and Kenichi couldn't say much. After all he's not the kind of person to help people at all, but one can help it when a child's life is on the line. Later Mayuri was angry at Kenichi for not bringing her to have such fun adventure, and she took all that anger out on him. But it wasn't like he was there on vacation, and they couldn't leave Anemone alone. Mayuri got depressed realizing he was right. Anemone then thanks Kenichi for saving Mary, and he was pleased to see her happy. He then shows the presents he brought for both of them, and it was Che Che. Mayuri was amazed by it, and Anemone couldn't believe its sweet taste which is bitter at the same time. But isn't chocolate bad for cats? Well beast folks are half human so we will leave it at that. A short time later, Mary made a full recovery, and Crouton along with the rest of the villagers moved to the safety of Nor's Pole Barony. Kenichi tells Crouton to be careful on their journey and tells Anemone to give this book to Mary. She approaches her, 
and shows her the new book which she and Kenichi made for her as a present. Anemone then hands her the book telling her to take care, and Mary started crying. She hugs her and bids farewell. Kenichi then approaches Crouton, and hands him a letter of introduction as promised with five gold pieces as a parting gift. He thanks Kenichi again stating he will never forget this favor. Crouton then looks at his wife, and hands Kenichi two rings cause they don't have any money left. Looking at it Kenichi wonders if those are their wedding rings? Well yes they bought them a long time ago at an old tool shop, although this might not worth a gold coin. But he tells him to keep it as collateral for the money he owes him. Crouton then thanks him again, and starts to leave. And just like that Crouton's family left to start a journey of their own. Sensing Anemone's sad mood, Kenichi pulls out his camera and shows her the pictures of the elves. He also tells her about ring that he got which allows him to have a conversations with elves. Then she comes to a picture of a little kitty which looked like a cute ball. And seeing a forest cat's kitten for the first time Mayuri starts to sniff the camera, and Kenichi had to tell her it doesn't work that way. Somewhere in the forest, we see a well-endowed woman walking, while humming a creepy tune, as she thinks of Kenichi. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see Primula's come back with her massive melons, then drop a comment. It really motivates me to make more videos. Leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Until next time, bye.